Hey guys, in this video we're going to be covering distance time graph. We're going to be looking at how to plot distance over time and we're going to be looking at what the gradient of a distance time graph will give us. So stay tuned. Let's jump right to it. So let's map the movement of this guy here. Let's call him Mr. Red. So at time zero, at the beginning, Mr. Red is at this position. So we record the time zero and distance from the original spot. So we're going to be tracking his movement from this spot. So at the moment it's zero. Now let's say at time two seconds, Mr. Red has gone from here to here. He has traveled a total distance of one meter here. So at two seconds, we record his distance moved is one meter. Now at four seconds, Mr. Red goes up. Remember that distance is a scalar quantity. It does not have direction. It does not matter in which direction Mr. Red moves. We still record the distance that he travels as distance. Here, the direction doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter whether he moves up or he moves right or he mo even if he moves left again, it will still be only care about the distance travel. So in the fourth second, he has traveled a total of two meters and so 4 seconds we record 2 meters and then at 6 seconds Mr. Red stayed at the same spot he didn't move at all so we record 6 seconds the total distance that he moved is still 2 meters he hasn't moved from the spot but at 8 seconds Mr. Red moved from here to here another additional 1 meter so in total at 8 seconds Mr. Red has moved 3 meters so we record 3 meters now this is how we record the movement of a person or an object. This is how we record their motion. This is how we measure their distance against time. Now let's look at how to graph it. So at the beginning, no movement. Now the y-axis is distance and the x-axis is time. This is usually, this is almost always the case. Unless there's a specific reason to switch it, it's always like this. So distance is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. So at the beginning, before the motion has started, he's at the starting point, time is zero, and distance is zero as well. At two seconds, he has moved one meter. So we go to two seconds and one meter. So we plot another point here. And then at four seconds, he has moved a total of two meters. So we go to four seconds and two meters. And then we plot another point here. Now at six seconds, he didn't move. So at 6 seconds, his total distance that he moved is still 2 meters. And so at 6 seconds, the distance is still 2 meters. At 8 seconds, he has moved a further 1 meter. So the total distance moved is 3 meters. So we go to 6 seconds and we plot at 3 meters. So this is the graph of his motion. Now notice a few things. First, the gradient is always positive for a distance time graph. In a distance time graph, the direction of motion does not matter. As long as the object is moving, the distance is going to increase. There is not going to be a decrease in the distance. You will know the dis difference when we go through displacement time graph later. So let, let's look at the graph, the overall pattern of the graph. So from zero to four seconds is moving. And then four to six seconds, he's not moving as we observed just now. When there is a flat line in the distance time graph, it means that the object is stationary. It is not moving. Even though time goes on, the distance stays the same. That means that object is still at the same place. The distance did not increase. That is why it is a flat line. And then from four, from six to eight, the object is moving again. So what do we get from the gradient of the graph then? Now let's look at mathematically what a gradient means. So how do we find a gradient? We get the difference, the change in y, y2 minus y1 over the change in x, x2 minus x1. This is how we find the gradient. The gradient means the slope of the graph, the steepness of the graph. And so this is how we normally find gradient. Now, y is distance. So when we get the difference in y, we are actually getting the change in the distance. That means, let's look at the blue line. So now we're going to, get, going to get the gradient of this line, 
from 0 to 4 seconds. So from 0 to 4 seconds, there's only one slope. There's only one gradient to find. So let's look at this. So this will be the difference in distance here traveled from 0 to 4 seconds. So it is at 4 seconds, it's 2. And then here is 0. And then the x axis, the difference in x is actually the difference in time. How much time has changed? Because the x axis here is actually time. So the gradient of a distance time graph is actually giving us the change in distance over time. Now, if you remember, this is the exact definition for speed. So the gradient of a distance time graph will give us speed. Let's look at this example. Let's calculate, try to calculate the speed. So the speed is the gradient. The gradient of this line, we take y2 minus y1, so 2 minus 0, 2 minus 0 meters over 4 minus 0. 4 minus 0 seconds. So we get 2 over 4, which we can simplify to 1 over 2 meters per second. This is the speed of Mr. Red from 0 to 4 seconds. This gradient here, this slope here. Then let's get from 4 to 6 seconds. So this is a different slope. Now we know it's a horizontal line. So horizontal line means stationary. The object is not moving. How do we do that? How do we prove that by finding the gradient? Let's find the gradient again. So we use the same method here to find the gradient y2 minus y1. y is distance. So 2 minus 2 and then we have the time is 6 minus 4. So 6 minus 4 is 2 and then we get 0 over 2. 0 divided by any number is still 0. And so we have proved that when it is horizontal, when the line is horizontal in a distance time graph, the speed is 0 meters per second, which means it is not moving, it is stationary. Now how about this point? Now visually when we look at it, the slope looks the same, the steepness looks the same. Like we can confirm it by finding the gradient again. So again y2 minus y1, distance is 3 minus 2, 3 minus 2, and then the time is 8 minus 6. So 8 minus 6 and we get 1 over 2 meters per second, which is the same gradient as before. That means Mr. Red was traveling at the same speed from 0 to 4 seconds and then from 6 to 8 seconds. That's all for today guys. I hope you've learned something. As usual, if you've learned something, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the red button below to subscribe. See you in the next video.